everyone. My name is Kimya Motley. I am the founder of Haven of Light International. And I founded this organization because in 2011, my ex-husband shot me four times. And he shot my daughter, who was 10 years old at the time, once as well. So as a result of this incident, I now help women, men, and children rebuild their lives after domestic violence. Well, I wanted to talk to you today because of an incident that just occurred and I'm feeling a little frustrated and I wanted to use this as an opportunity to give some education to you. So I'm sitting in my car, I just finished my lunch after court today and I said, I need to talk about protective orders. I need to talk about TPOs. So in order to get a protective order, more than likely you're gonna go down to your county district attorney's office. That's where we do it in my county. Every county is different, so you might want to research that for yourself. But more than likely you're gonna go down to your district attorney's office. Once you get there, the person behind the counter is gonna ask you for the address of the perpetrator. So you're gonna give that to them as well as any details of the incidents that led you to take out a protective order. Now, evidence could include text messages, it could include um, voice messages, but mostly details of the violent incidents. So you're gonna file this information and they're gonna give you your paperwork and then they're going to serve the perpetrator. Well, at this point, you will get a court date. So you show up in court, and if your perpetrator is there, then he gets an opportunity, or she gets an opportunity to tell their side of the story, and then your order becomes permanent for one year. That's it, one year. So, um, what's interesting to me, and that's great, what's interesting to me is the stuff that I encountered today that really made me think, okay come on folks we need to change this there was one lady in there that had already filed protective orders twice okay and because he could not be served she had to file the paperwork all over again really all over again there was also a lady in there this is something else I need to tell you so if you have the protective order in place, it's good for one year, as I told you. Now, if you want to make that temporary protective order permanent, you must file for a motion at month 10 or 11 of your temporary order in order to make it permanent. Well, guess what? There was a lady down there who had done exactly that, and we are two days from her temporary restraining order expiring, and guess what? He couldn't be served. He couldn't be served. So because he couldn't be served, guess what she's going to have to do? Start all over again and file the paperwork again. Come on, folks. If women are going through victimization at the hands of the perpetrators, and then they have to turn around and go through this whole ring around the rosy routine with following this protective order, how many of them are going to keep it up? You're already feeling emotionally scarred, in some cases physically scarred. This is a lot, and we gotta do something to change these laws. This is Kimya Motley. If you have any questions, inbox me. I'll be happy to answer any questions about protective orders. Thank you.